Hi. A while back I made a Game Boy emulator, which is the perfect project for anyone trying to test their skills or anybody interested in machine language. It's simple, but it's still very challenging, which is why it's not complete. But I just wanted to show you what it can do. Considering that, I'm very surprised at how well Link's Awakening runs. The game is 512 kilobytes total in memory, except my emulator should only work on games that are 32 kilobytes, in theory. But Link doesn't seem to care. I've actually just been playing through and everything looks and sounds great. The audio and visual effects are basically spot on and it's pretty much impossible to tell the difference between this and the actual game. The only error I've noticed so far is from this pinchy guy and that's about it. Let's look at a different game. How about the Final Fantasy game we all remember? The music and the art aren't up to par with Zelda, and that goes for the actual game as well. It starts off with a fight where Catman decides to utilize his teleportation abilities. To be honest, the actual game might be like that, I'm not certain. And then you win, and then the game wastes more of your time. Also, whenever there isn't any music, the game will start to serenade you with a dog whistle, so get used to that. Alright, this is really boring. Nope, that's not an enemy. Well, that's enough of that. A bit of a lesser known title. Let's see how Pokemon holds up. Gorgeous. And just like usual, there's Squirtle hanging out, and Vulpix sipping through, and Kangaskhan looks good. Now, the music's kind of trash. One of the instruments sounds like it actually hasn't played the song before, and it's just struggling along. Meanwhile, the bassist is going wild. Anyway, so the game actually holds up pretty well. We can even start a new game. The only difference is that Professor Oak stands there reciting Pokemon cries for eternity. Wanna play Super Mario Land 2? Hang on. So, problem is, the Game Boy is such a flaky system on its own that it's kind of hard to identify who's responsible for all the glitches. Like, that's actually in the game. Though I think this probably explains some stuff. The Game Boy has an extra fat list of instructions, and I only added certain ones when I needed to. You can tell by all the jumps in the opcodes. Kirby's Dream Land 2 is pretty dang good. No complaints here. Aside from these boxes being sucked into infinity, and how my save state is from when it froze pleasantly. Now, Bubble Ghost. I just want to show you Bubble Ghost. Bubble Ghost is a game where you're a ghost, and you blow around a bubble. And I don't think the game ever elaborates upon where you're supposed to be, or who you were when you were alive. And that's not important. Anyway, it runs fine. Also, the music's great. Except I'm pretty sure it's ripping off Back to the Future. Castlevania 2 is great, and Wave Race is a mess. Now, I did implement a TAS player, which is short for Tool Assisted Speedrun. Which is short for a file that has a big list of button inputs that tells the game how to play itself. Unfortunately, the timing of my emulator isn't perfect, so it's doomed to desync at some point. Like right here. Regardless, it's still fun to watch, and it's nice to see some glitches that were already in the game. For instance, you can warp in Link's Awakening if you hit select during a screen transition. And even though this one's broken, Link still manages to get to the 8th dungeon.
So here's the portion of the video where I talk about this big debug menu hanging out here. Now I don't know why I felt the need to define all of these buttons and text boxes manually, you know, without making an actual window supported by the operating system. But at least it's cross-platform, and it allowed for a lot of flexibility in design. Anyway, let's start up here. This is all the data responsible for calculations. There's essentially eight small, multi-purpose variables. And the two at the top here are special cases. PC is where the program is being run. SP manages the stack, which is used for temporary storage. And the yellow stuff down here is just extra information about certain calculations, which is pretty sweet. The window to the right here is a local disassembly of what code is being run. Uh, it isn't used to tell what the program is doing, it's just a diagnostic to make sure that all instructions are behaving as they should. Um, and we can step through it uh, one instruction at a time. Step, 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 step. Okay, here's a good example. This instruction here, inc e, that stands for increment e. And basically, after this instruction gets run, the variable e, or the register, uh, e, which is represented right here, which right now is zero, that's going to be incremented by one. So let's step it and see if it works. Hey, nice. All right, you've seen what step does. This thing pauses the game and this resets. And these things down here are used for emulator diagnostics, just to help with jumping out of loops or skipping sections of code. So take a look at this text box over here. This is how we're gonna load our ROMs. Let's say we wanna play Kirby's Dreamland. Kirby's, Kirby's Dreamland. Okay. Alright, let's take a look at these buttons over here. Each of these buttons toggle the four audio channels for the Game Boy. Uh, there's only four, and those include two square waves, one freeform wave, and a noise channel, which is basically used for explosions or percussion. So we can single them out and listen to them individually. Uh, that's pretty cool. By the way, I think it's upsetting that this game lets you murder this defenseless bird child. Next, this big box down here, this is the Game Boy's memory. And this is where all of the relevant game data likes to hang out. The Game Boy only has 65,000 bytes of space, and since cartridges can be much, much larger than that, it'll have to switch out chunks of memory from the cartridge. Unfortunately, my emulator doesn't do that, so that poses a lot of limitations. And that's generally the reason why most games don't work. And down at the end here is mostly used for input and output stuff, like button presses or instrumentation. Now for save states, if you want to save a state, just hit save state, and if you want to load a state, uh, you want to hit load state. And we're going to do that right now. Nice. Decently far in the game. Um... I don't know how much longer the game is going to let me play it before it crashes at some point. Because all the other games have. Castlevania did, uh, Kirby's Dreamland did, and it's all because I never ever implemented that the bank switching from the cartridge, unfortunately. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. <laughs> there is one more bug. <laughs> Why does it do that? So if you've ever wanted to create an emulator, or you're just very interested in low-level computer concepts, I think you should totally try to make one. The challenge is worth it, and you'll learn very, very much, even if little progress is made. To be honest, the Game Boy is probably too complicated for the first go, but I'll still post the source code of this in the description, so you can take a look if you want. I haven't touched it in a long time and I don't plan on completing it. It was fun though. And I think the most exciting part, aside from the programming, was watching everything come together. Seeing some really good games come to life through something you created, step by step and refining all the quirks, that's the most satisfying thing in the world. So thanks for watching, I appreciate it.